Have you ever looked at this book and thought, oh, it'd be fun to do 2% of that instead of the whole thing? Well, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I have this little scene where I have a character in a room uh, kind of stretching their arms out and trying to measure uh, the general room volume uh, in audio, we have reverb systems and we have application of uh, acoustics across a whole wide variety of elements and areas in games. Some of them are authored, some of them are reverb spaces like uh, this video that I did previously, and some of them are procedurally generated spaces or reverbs. Part of that procedural generation does start uh, with this element where we have some kind of measurement system. Uh, I have a very rudimentary measurement system here um, which just points out to four directions from the character uh, based on the space itself. So this can sort of change in, in uh, or this specific iteration might change in different versions and might change uh, with different room sizes. But essentially what it does is gives us a... Uh, value of uh, room volume. Um, so this is 216, I guess it's uh, meters squared being the space, but we can feed this volume. Um, so, you know, I have this normalized average volume based on a min and max range, which means that as I kind of move, I'll just lock this, and then as I move to different spaces, uh, so we're in this very large space at the moment, then as I move to a smaller space, um, I can see this average room volume change uh, right down to 100. So you can see that this is like half the room volume, um, given that there's still uh, one arrow pointing out quite far. Um, so you'll see that will change the room volume as well. But each of these spaces, you know, would probably have a different uh, reflection path and different room element. And maybe you've got wise, uh, maybe you don't, maybe you've been uh, plugging into things, maybe you need to build it yourself. We won't be plugging the audio side of this today, but we will be looking at just the pure element of how do we measure wall distances and start getting some of these variables and some of these factors. Uh, I'm going to walk you through this system here. It does fire on ticks, and you can see this is just a little element that will do some whistling, so we actually don't need that right now. So this is the whole system that we'll be looking to work through. Starting off with this update array vectors. Now, we're it, it can seem a little bit strange to start because we need to point out and you need to understand that there are two different parts of vectors in Unreal. There's a right vector and a forward vector um, being forward and right of the point at origin respectively or at least the world rotation of the thing um, that you're starting with. Now, because our player is the sort of aim aiming element here, um, we're going to be passing through an, a reference to their objects that we get just by getting the player character. Passing in that, we're going to pull the mesh for the local and world rotation elements, and then we're going to get this orientation vectors array, which is this, this array here that I've set up, or that I will set up, I uh, haven't set it up as of yet, uh, to pass in the each of the points that will kind of iterate through get the index and then set up uh, the item with the correct right vector. Um, this is to say that the v orientation vectors being like forward, right, left, back, um, will kind of constantly be calculated um, just to ensure that we're shooting off in the right direction um, and we're sort of filling out this uh, orientation vectors array um, a little bit later on. Now I've got the four because I've, uh, the four indexes that is, because I've already set up that I want those four, but you could add more vectors here. You could actually add more directions. You could make this um, detect the roof as well. One of the major parts that we are missing at the moment is that roof detection given that we just go left, right, up and down. We shoot off in this direction and we calculate, um, we, we just pre-populate this vector field Okay, and then we can, once we have that, kind of go through that and get uh, each of the distances that we're looking and then we'll want to average the distances over time. Uh, for that, I have this function called get distance to wall, uh, which is this one here. And all that does is go through each of the distances in an array that we've passed through and add up all the values and then set the average room value by dividing the number of values you have by the length. Very, very 
um, rudimentary way of calculating the average, I suppose, of taking the four measurements, adding them all up and dividing it by four, just the same way you'd get an average for anything um, to work with that. Next up, we'll have a draw distance. Now this is just a variable that's passed in. At the moment, I have it set at 5,000 just for the space that it was, um, because you'll find if I go to uh, a different space, I might want to set up a different draw distance to sort of uh, tweak the average normalized volume. Um, it's really handy to have normalized volumes for elements like your reverb containers so that you, uh, you don't find yourself having to author every single space unnecessarily. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't put in convolution reverbs across a large sort of area. Uh, it's just not what we're doing this time, uh, but it might go as part of the space itself. So these orientation vectors, uh, once we have set up these orientation vectors, we can kind of go through them and get the distance. We, we take the vector that we'd created, which is like the forward, left, right, up, down, whatever. Um, and we go that distance, we get the distance to the wall. This is with a simple line trace where we break out the result and only care about the distance. Um, now the line trace itself is the distance, which is the orientation vector. Uh, multiplied by the check distance, which is the draw distance that we have of 5,000. Um, and then we're taking the origin point, origin point being a kind of offset from the actor. Now, um, initially I had it at zero and, you know, it's on the floor. It's like she's measuring stuff with her feet, right? Which doesn't, it, it, there's some strange measurement systems out there, but uh, I don't think feet should be one of them. Uh, um, but, you know, so we get the wall distances. This is the target mesh, the world location of the target mesh, kind of apply this little height offset of just like 100 units on the Z axis just to push it up to about our hips. Um, but you could really pick this to be anywhere and pass that in as the origin point. So this is to ensure that she is the one casting out from the middle of, middle of her sort of hips. So we get a good average uh, distance. We push off for all of that, we do a line trace, we get the distance to the wall, and we sort of slowly add that to the distances array, which is this one here that's set up. So we kind of iterate through that and we can get the, uh, yeah, the iteration of that kind of populates these um, distance values. So if I look back at, did we go through, so we've gone through those distance to the wall, yes, update the array vectors. This is to just get uh, each of the indexes and that. Now this actually only needs to happen the once, I believe, um, but we're just doing it a few times. And wall distances, we're gonna go through, get the distance of the wall, set up the wall distance, yep. Uh, the last element here, we have the average values. Yes, we've gone through that as well. Finally, we have this normalized range. This is for that normalized average. The normalized average, again, it is just really useful to have a value between zero and one because there's nothing more annoying than trying to tweak your reverb settings and it's like zero to 1730 and, and it all breaks if you change it. For, you know, if the if the room changes by 0.2 meters. Uh, so I'd really encourage you to have like a range max, which is just like the max size of the room. I have it set at 400. This won't translate in every space, um, but it sort of depends on what you're trying to do with this. Now, if you're going to take this value and kind of push it off uh, and use it to drive a whole bunch of convolutions, cool. Maybe you're using it so that some reverb uh, elements like uh, early slapback decays or um, something that kind of a, a flutter echo or something like that might not trigger below a certain uh, room volume. Um, it's totally up to you. Uh, this is just one way of looking at a, a sort of very systematic or systemic way, I should say, of uh, generating this information and having it be able to be expanded on because if I wanted to add more uh, sort of degrees of freedom, I suppose, or in terms of a, a higher count of shooting out diagonals um, and improving that kind of room variance because what one of the things that would be safe to say here is there's many spots given that we only shoot out sort of straight forward and, and uh, back and then to the sides. There's quite a few spots where this uh, could sort of, you could be standing in one spot where you get a really long um, 
a really, really long angle in one side and, or maybe, you know, even, even spots in this kitchen. Um, by the way, this is one of the uh, assets that's free this month. Um, beautiful ArcViz pack. Uh, you don't need a beautiful ArcViz pack, just like you don't need uh, beautiful, beautiful, glorious thread textures, but it's nice to look at. So <laughs> there's definitely a few spots in this room where just having the four um, sort of direct points uh, could be improved by increasing the uh, resolution. Uh, you could have many, many, many if you really, really cared. And certainly in some uh, maybe FPS titles or something where you're really relying on the sound of certain uh, elements or people making certain sounds, uh, I would say definitely increase that. But as a starting point, having uh, this sort of line trace you can see firing off, um, it does change a little bit as we move. It changes with her rotation because she or her her hips there, or slightly above her hips, I should say, um, is the main uh, casting point, and then it's just going to cast out to those uh, distances. And as we kind of walk into different spaces, you'll see uh, different volumes, different variables. Uh, this is all a blueprint component as well. So you can see this uh, wall distance blueprint component means that we actually get these um, pre-calculated orientation vectors because uh, it does change based on where she is. Plus we have the height offset of the actor, um, given that's to raise it up to her hips. And then we have the distances and you'll see each of the distances. Uh, you can see this 68, for example, is, is this one here. Uh, and then the others around respectively. And we have the average room volume and you can see because we've set a max level, we have a normalized average being the space of uh, that she's in. And if I, as I said, if I lock this and walk into another room, you can see that we're in a slightly smaller room. So we would have slightly less reverb. These kinds of systems are a really fantastic way to alleviate some of the strain that comes from um, developing these systems and some of the strain that comes from maintaining reverb systems in spaces. And I would encourage you to have at least a 2D layer that has some of these variables or has a kind of a, a, a audio profiler, maybe we'll call it, um, which would be able to help uh, mediate that difference, especially if you have many spaces to author um, and you don't want to spend all your time designing reverb spaces by pulling around uh, boxes and you know calculating. Now, this is a different way to do it than uh, what was in that previous video. So if you do want to use some of the reverb container uh, solutions as well, or in addition, or uh, instead of this system, definitely check out that video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.